Okay, welcome back to theCUBE. We're live here in Santa Clara Convention Center. This is theCUBE at Velocity Conference, O'Reilly Media's uh, show around DevOps, Cloud Ops, application developers, really the operational of, uh, systems and technologies of the web, mobile, all one and the same, all under a new paradigm. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined with my co-host, Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. Jonathan Thorpe is here, he's the DevOps evangelist at Serena Software. Uh, Jonathan, welcome to theCUBE. Let's talk DevOps, we, we love the topic. Okay, nice to be here. Yeah, good, so, uh, so talk about your role at, at Serena Software. That's, uh, I love the title. <laughs> okay, so at Serena Software, I work as part of the marketing organization, and before that I've actually been a DevOps practitioner for many years. But now what I'm actually doing is engaging with the community, going around events like DevOps Days, um, Velocity, and you know, Flowcon, and talking to a lot of the people that actually do, are DevOps practitioners and making sure that Serena is dev, has its finger on the pulse of what's happening in the DevOps world. So tell me, what, is, what does DevOps mean to you and Serena Software? You're a practitioner of DevOps, you know, what, what is it to you? Well, part of me, when I've worked in DevOps in the past, it's been, well, before DevOps, I should say, there's always been that divide between the dev and the operations teams, and I found myself usually falling in between that gap because I have dev and ops, and ops experience. You were the hybrid. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so essentially what you'd end up finding is what I've always called the coalition of the willing, where even if your organizations were not open to more collaboration, you'd usually find some like-minded people to actually try and work together. And if you look at actually what that means, you know, people tearing down the silos, giving, giving each other limited access to each other group's tools, it's a lot like DevOps actually is basically. But that was much more ad hoc and should I say perilous basically because when people found out you were bending the rules in order to try and be more effective, sometimes people loved it, sometimes people hated it. So there's a spectrum of, of DevOps, right? Yes. There's what you just described as sort of um, you know, the initial collaboration, yes. sharing of tools, sharing, you know, like-minded people want to want to get some stuff done in a better fashion. Yeah. And then there's the other end of the spectrum, which is sort of hyper, you know, hyper DevOps, where you're cross-training and it's essentially one role. And, yes. and, 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 and so, talk about that, and I'm sure, you know, in between. So talk about that spectrum. Where are organizations relative to that spectrum? Are they just thinking about maybe collaborating or you know, is the, is the bell curve such that 10% you know, are actually in that hyper DevOps you know, <laughs> cycle? So what I'm finding is you know, I concentrate a lot more on sort of the enterprise side of things, mm -hmm. and you know, there are quite a few companies that are they're doing DevOps in the way you know, I described with the collaboration way of doing things, but they're actually not really even aware of the term DevOps for a large part. They're doing DevOps-like practices, but you, know, you introduce the term and they don't know what, what it is really. Um, and then you'll get um, places like um, FamilySearch, Ancestry.com, and I choose those as examples because they're companies that you really wouldn't think are traditional, you know, uh, they're not really companies that really do high performance things as far as really pushing, pushing out a lot of releases, but you know, they really push the edge with the mixtures of commercial and open source tools to deliver an absolute ton of updates, you know, really, really frequently. Um, so it's, it's hitting places where you wouldn't necessarily expect. It's left the Etsy's and the Amazon's and the Google's and, it, and it's out in the wild. Jonathan, I got to ask you, mentioned you going out, out to the community and, and uh, talking to folks. Obviously one of the hottest trends in DevOps is OpenStack. Yes. In terms of the conversations, you know, OpenStack has, has, has generated a lot of lift in terms of folks in the build your own cloud, and that's the developers basically. <laughs> and the developers yeah. are saying, hey, you know, we love Amazon, we've been using Amazon all day long, thank you very much. Uh, Werner Vogels and everyone else in the Amazon team has been fantastic. But when you start to get into the, like, the enterprises where it kind of needs to be industrial strength, the SLAs, all the other things happening, so, so OpenStack's important. What's your take on OpenStack? Is that DevOps? Is that not DevOps? Is that kind of on the edge? Well, the cloud part of it is, you know, it's, that's about providing resources. You know, if you think of what's driven DevOps, it's the more releases, more, free, you know, more frequently more releases, and that actually requires more more infrastructure, whether it's physical or virtual, to actually process all of those builds that are pushed between dev to different QA environments and finally to production. So, you know, cloud, just like release automation and other tools like Puppet and Chef, they're just enablers of an effective process that's sort of encompassed by DevOps. What about Node.js? What are you seeing in the Node community? Okay, I'm sort of a little outside that community. <laughs> I've played a little bit myself. 
Um, but you know, that's my experience with the Node community is literally just do playing with the code myself. We just had Tom from Sosta on. Yeah. He was saying, you know, get it out there fast. That's which is agile, our time to market, yeah. and make it highly high quality. Big focus of developers: high quality and fast. Any, any things that you're seeing here at Velocity that gets your eye, captures your attention, in terms of hitting that mark? Well, there's a lot of best practices going, and what's really impressed me, one of my key areas that I'm interested in personally is mobile. And a lot of the analysis on how to get high-performing mobile you know, web pages, uh, a lot of the different ideas for analyzing the problems that you're getting, the page load times. You know, it's really interesting, that's actually turning it from more of a, from more of an art into a set of best practices so that you, know, you don't have to spend so much of your time really trying to guess at what's going to work. I mean, I was really shocked to actually hear earlier that you know, your typical web page now has a, is a one and a half megabyte download. You know, that, that's, that's huge basically if you're looking at page load yeah, times. Yeah, and yeah. So this is really 50 interesting. 50 megabytes if you're a gamer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's what Google told us. Yeah. So I mean, this is really interesting as far as trying to make sure that you get something out that's not only um, meets you know, application quality, but also performance quality. Because if your pages take too long to load, people just assume it's broken quite often. And that's, you know, I came across that back working in the web in the early 2000s, and it's just as true now. People are even more impatient. Yeah. So there's this big cultural shift going on uh, with DevOps. But you know, you were talking about, you know, that you focus on the enterprise, and, yeah. and the enterprise customers that I talk to, they're actually doing DevOps. They really look at it uh, in, in sort of three dimensions. One is the business value. Yeah. How's it going to save costs, drive revenue, you know, through improved quality, speed development, et cetera. Yeah. There's a clear business case that they can make. And that's, yeah. what that's what enter enterprise IT people do, is they make business cases and then they, yeah. they, they, they invest. The second thing they look at is passion. What's going to excite my people? Yeah. Uh, and the third is, okay, what kind of skills and knowledge and tools do I need to deploy? And, and many of the guys that are succeeding in DevOps are saying, if it's not a project that drives value, excites my people, and uses these sort of new methods and new tools, I'm going to outsource it. I don't, I don't want to mess time, you know, spend time with it because it's not going to drive my organization forward. Now that is sort of a radical view of, 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 of the development cycle within the enterprise. Um, but so first of all, does that, resonate with you, and second of all, given the successes that enterprises have had with DevOps, what's holding people back? Okay, so number, that definitely does resonate mm. with me. I mean, it's all about delivering business value faster. Mm. Um, and yes, you know, it's a lot of work to sort of get this sort of thing started, so you definitely need people to be passionate about it. Now, one of the things that you mentioned was the skills involved, you know, people using the latest technology. Outside of Silicon Valley and some of the some of the larger areas that are you know like maybe some of the financial companies that are in the hot areas like New York on occasions, you've got people that are they have skills, but there are not that many people actually in the teams that know how to hook all these disparate open source systems together, and that's where the opportunity is for a company like Serena, where you know we handle the whole workflow management side of it and the integrations, you know a lot of the process things. When I was talking to Patrick Dubois um, at DevOps Days Austin, he agreed that you know that's the bit that's the bit that's not sexy. You know, they the people doing DevOps like to talk about Puppet and Chef, and to actually have you know vendors that can actually take care of the the framework sort of things and the integrations. That lets them focus on what what they're passionate about and what they're interested in. So the exact scenario you described is what we see as the opportunity there. So talk more about Serena and how you add value. So let's say I'm a CIO and I'm saying, hey, this DevOps thing sounds pretty good to me. You know, but I'm getting all these cultural you know, issues. I got my guys are in silos and they're fighting me. How can you help me break through so some, so some of those barriers? Okay, so I mean, obviously we're sensitive to the cultural side of things, which you, know, you can't solve that with technology. That's kind of my problem, yeah. right, as the CIO, but I mean, yeah. any advice you can give me, but go ahead. But what we actually can do there is, we can provide a common process layer across you know, all the different organizations that are interested in being able to see where your releases are. Mm. Whether you're um, at the CIO level, you know, or you're the project manager side of things, we can track all the way through, no matter what group you're in, and provide a common high level framework for you to move through. And then at that point you're providing visibility to people in the format that they need and the underlying tools that are maybe department specific, you know, they're not exposed to them basically. They're, they're taking a higher level, you know, a higher business level view of where things are. And also, you know, it takes away some of the pains of the staffing. Remember if you're re using something like a Serena release automation tool that actually does a lot of the integration out of the box, a lot of the different systems that enterprises have, 
Remember, it's uh, if you get something that's open source, and we love open source, but they usually have some troubles integrating with some of the bigger systems out there because people writing it don't necessarily have access to like SAP, you know, other the enterprise class systems. So if you get somebody like a Serena that really has the toolbox to let you integrate with whatever number of systems you have, especially if it's on enterprise scale, once it moves out from a team in the enterprise or two, but into like every every aspect of the enterprise that could use DevOps, then you need those out of the box integrations that are tested. No. So, so is this common process layer that you talk about, is that a first step in actually moving toward a, a, a DevOps environment? Or I is would, it, or I is would it or is it, you know, because there's got to be some, you know, some, some, some skills, training involved as well. But, yes, but talk there about is. Sort of but I mean, if you can at least start to smooth out the silo, you know, the gap, the arguments between the teams by having a common process that they can mm -hmm. all agree on, and whether that's got lower level processes that each team cares about in detail, no, and they can cling what, on to. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, but, but that's it, what you're doing, yeah. right? They're clinging on to yes. these old processes, but but yeah. they work. Yeah. That's why they're clinging on to them. You know, yes. you know, this, this is working. Yes. Let's not. You know, let's not screw yeah. it. So it's essentially you're describing an abstraction layer across the silos. Yes. That begins to, um, you know, break down some of those silos in a way, and and, and foster communications and and knowledge sharing across those silos. Is that fair? Yes. And okay. the benefit is that you're putting out more releases. You're getting visibility because it's all going through that common process. You know, up above, you can get the approvals. So. You're gaining visibility, not just smoothing out where things, you know, the, the silos, you know, but you're getting visibility and control as well. But ultimately, again, as, let's say as a CIO, is it not my objective over, let's say, a, let's say a five-year plan to eliminate the barriers, you know, between ops and dev and actually cross-train people such that my high-performance team is essentially, um, can, can do both jobs so that I don't have to have separate organizations. Is that, is that too lofty? Is that overzealous? Or is that actually what CIO should be pushing for? I believe it's overzealous actually. It's not, uh, having that wide range of skills across all those teams, it's not in everybody's skill set. You know, it's, not every, it's not what everybody's interested in. And you know, what, there's already a shortage of people working in the industry basically. Ah. If we try to actually limit that to just like people that are passionate about dev and ops, I mean, everybody needs to be passionate about adding business value, you know, but maybe taking it to that extreme where everyone needs to be fully cross-trained would make kind of current what skills. What if I doubled everybody's worse. pay? What if I doubled everybody's pay and said, you're not going to work for me <laughs> unless you're of this <laughs> ilk? Would, would I be able to justify the business value? I, mean, I bet you in some industries I would. Yes, you would, but I honestly think that the, the current uh, skills that are, you know, that are in the market and the tools that are available really aren't going to support that. Yeah, okay. Um, maybe, it's a, maybe there's an investment in training that has to, be, has to occur or, or, well, uh, as well. Yeah. If you don't mind me adding what I did, yeah, um, I was um, with um, Dave Nielsen, of mm -hmm. who does um, Cloud Camp. It's a five year, it's yeah. basically. Cloud Camp, you know Cloud yes. Camp. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> so the Cloud Club, early days. I mean, I was DevOps, you know, pre Heroku, pre, you know, pre everything. I was, yeah. you know, Amazon was just, you know, making their bones in there. Right scale was just entering. You know, you had things like, I mean, little things were like provisioning, and yeah. there was a core group of people that early on were really setting the, the kernel, the foundation for that movement. Yeah. And that's why I brought up the OpenStack question, because OpenStack has similar mindset. It was, it was a lot of cloud washing at first. It felt like a marketing program yeah. for a lot of people. Yeah. But what happened was you saw the community galvanize around yeah. it. And we are so pro open source yeah. because we've seen it work, right? Look at Cloud Era. I was talking about Mike Olson earlier this morning. Yeah. I just stepped down as CEO because he's got a new guy who's going to go take it public. But open source is the new standards bodies, right? Yes. That is what is happening. In the old days, you had these standard bodies, these you know, high priests that would anoint standards. Yeah. You know, IEEE, ITF, well, I, I, you know, all these, I, and that's gone. Yes. It's the communities now. It's yeah. mature enough with open source. So, yeah. I'll see DevOps is accelerated. Yeah. So the question I have for you is, what has changed today, just from two years ago? We did two years ago, we brought the Cube when the Cube was early on in our, our formation, uh, going to events. We went to a, an event no one's ever heard of called Node Summit. That was the guys just doing the Node That was the beginning of JavaScript going server side. Yeah. So go back two years to today, what's different for, not no, but DevOps in general? What, what can you share, given your, your uh, feedback on the market and evangelizing? Yeah. I think what's actually different is, I think finally developers are understanding that it's not about writing cool code, there is, real, there is business value. And that's, you know, it's not seen as, people haven't got their heads down in their silos so much. 
people are open to the business value. And then you've got books like The Phoenix Project by Gene Kim, which actually go a long way as far as articulating to everybody you know, what the business value of IT is in general. And that's, you know, that's getting people, that's the start, getting people out of their silos and actually looking at the business value. You know, people are realizing that if they don't, before we went to traditional waterfall, you can actually work on a project for like a year, two years, or whatever, writing your cool code that you were happy with. It really didn't matter whether it added value yeah. to the customers from the guy on the ground. I tell you, that's a real home run rep. Business yeah. value is a conversation that has to be had. We were yesterday at yes. GE, had the industrial cloud of the Internet of Things event, and uh, Wikibon's Jeff Kelly was talking about big data, and he gave the example, he said, hey, you know, big data value can be looked at from a couple perspectives. One is serving the right ad to the right user, yeah. and if that doesn't work, Big deal, you get a bad ad. But yeah. what about delivering medicine to a patient, a critical patient, and, you, yep. and that gets messed up via some app? That's, that's, that's critical. Yeah. So what's the value? Or a jet that has turbines and you know, the engines, yes. the data from the engines doesn't get delivered because the ops not aren't working. Yep. I mean, that's critical danger. Yep. That's and value. Yes, and the key thing is right now with the pace of deliveries with web, with web 2.0, yes. is you're going to get called on working on something that doesn't add value much faster. Yeah. And the I think that's why people are stuck their head up. The application market right now is so, so focused on this and I think it's very relevant. Yeah. Um, so my final question I want to ask you, uh, Jonathan, because um, we've got a break, our next guest is, okay. uh, tell the folks out there what's going on at Velocity this year. What is it about here? Why is this show so special? And why isn't this just some like a cloud show or an app show? Why is it, why is it different? And what's so important about Velocity? Well, what's setting Velocity apart right now is that each session that I've been to has added some real you know, value, real technical value there for the people that are attending. It seems to be very much in tune with the people that are here, giving the right tricks and tips. And everybody seems to be very enthusiastic about all the sessions. You know, I mean, you could, you could be a little concerned by, hey, the sessions all, you know, a lot of the people giving sessions are the, are the sponsors. But a lot of the sponsors are the people really doing cutting edge, you know, application development and deployment. And that's what's important here. You're really getting a good sense of the people that are here, they're pushing the boundaries, and they're sharing what they're doing to push the boundaries and helping, the, helping move everybody forward. Jonathan, thanks for coming on uh, theCUBE. We really appreciate it. This is live coverage of Velocity Conference, O'Reilly Media's uh, great event around DevOps, infrastructure as code, applications, and really powering web scale, hyperscales, even small scale if it's, if it's got business value. This is the new integrated technologies, design meets infrastructure. We'll be right back here inside theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events to strike a signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.